What's happening, people? Good morning, Europe, and welcome, everyone, to our live stream. My name is Andrew, and for the last 10 years, I've worked in many retail and institutional Forex brokerages in Europe. Follow me in this amazing journey and find out the hidden corners of Forex trading. Learn what most Forex brokers don't want you to know and get rewarded for learning. You can find all the links in the description down below, guys. Uh, and if you like what you see, like, uh, share, and subscribe us on your favorite media channel and support us in delivering more great content. This show is proudly sponsored by our partners at uh, Forexe and Markets.com. European markets open. And my guest for today, the man that took Forex trading to another level, Joe Monteiro, coming up. And as promised, we are coming back live with my guest for today, with Joao Monteiro. Joao, very, very good morning. How are you? Very well, and you? Good, good. Always good. Very early in the morning, though. How do you feel this morning? Uh, it's good. It's good to start early to, uh, to follow all the, the excitement in the market. There is a lot of uh, excitement indeed in the market. How is Forexe doing, by the way? It's been a while since we spoke. Great. Now everything is going well. As, as planned, we have been obviously focused now on the release of the, of the new competitions portal, which is practically completed. At the same time, we are we are working on integration with with a few more uh, instruments and assets, which I believe uh, can be uh, differentiation for us uh, comparing with other with other brokers. Uh, we keep actively uh, keeping having uh, new campaigns, new new trading tools as well for our for our clients. We are very soon also will be releasing a, an indicator which will be free for all forex clients, uh, where they will be able to uh, see the, our trading signals straight on the MT4. Wow! So okay. uh, we are we are actively we we don't rest yet. <laughs> well done. Right. This is the first time uh, we speak after the elections. It seems that we both lost the bet regarding the U.S. president. What do we do? Call it even and wish Joe Biden all the best? Uh, we call it even uh, to wish uh, good or bad. Obviously, I wish the best for, for Mr. Biden. Uh, for me, as, as obviously, we want is just stability. Uh, at the end of the day, so uh, we, uh, I think, the thing that the transition will not be as smooth as as we expected. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they wished. Let's say I don't think Trump will, will make the lives easier. Uh, at the same time, we need to see an outcome from all the all the all the court uh, cases uh, regarding the uh, the votes uh, and how how, how in this will progress until another year. Uh, I also feel that uh, we might see uh, some, uh, maybe some, uh, some impact from Trump uh, with, with a few decisions which might be less orthodox until the end of the year. Uh, but that's it from Mr. Trump. We can always expect the, the not the worst, but the, the unexpected. The unexpected, yeah. I laughed so hard yesterday when I saw that Joe Biden encountered such difficulties from Republicans in regards to, to the stimulus measures. And it got me thinking, maybe the problem wasn't the president. Maybe the problem was the Senate. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I think, I think the, the, the Senate will not make the life easier for Mr. Biden. Uh, but we, uh, at the end of the day, I think that the stability will come only when, uh, in fact, the, the transition is completed, or, or when when Mr. Biden have a, a more a more relaxed environment around him, because at, the, at this stage uh, everything is is still a bit unclear, and obviously in this kind of uh, of uncertainty, um, it's it's never easy to 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 work, and also it's never it, it can open for us traders overall uh, good opportunities in terms of volatility in the market so there's the good and bad 
Yeah, let's put it this way. I would not want to be the U.S. president as things stand right now. No. <laughs> now, there's a lot going on on the markets in the last few days. Vaccine news, Bitcoin going through the roof, never-ending uh, Brexit talks. We got a positive news regarding Brexit yesterday, let's say. EU announced they're very close to potentially signing a deal. I don't want to talk about it until I see it signed and stamped. Uh, yeah. Stimulus measures and the markets don't seem to be able to pick a direction what uh, what's going on are the markets reacting more to the news these days definitely i think i think that the, the, the impact of covid uh, the, the news about a, a solution with a vaccine uh, this was in, in europe uh, and you know that mr Lagarde uh, is is quite quite uh, positive always regarding uh, stimulus so we we are obviously waiting for for some news on that on that regard um but yes i think i think uh, the news are having uh, a huge impact and uh, uh, assets like bitcoin as you mentioned uh, gold uh, at the long run i think they will they will uh, increase in value the bitcoin uh, is not very far from reaching the the high uh, history yes. uh, point price of of twenty thousand, and so we are we are uh, looking at it. But uh, my my understanding is, is that we have uh, we have uh, a huge impact of news now, and people are, are uh, every day looking for information in order to help them make a decision on their trades. Yeah, and we saw the market's reaction a few days ago. Now, talking about the vaccine, what do you think, Pfizer or Moderna? Who do you think will uh, we release the vaccine sooner? It's, uh, it's still unclear. I think we are talking about two, uh, two big, big names. Uh, it's not a matter of, uh, of who's going to come first, I think. Everyone is trying to their best, and I think this information is never as clear as it might seem. Uh, I think, obviously, they, I don't think someone coming out with uh, with the information uh, of ninety percent, ninety percent, or ninety five percent, ninety five percent, yeah, accurate, uh, might might uh, represent anything at this stage. I think they are still running some checks. Uh, what I feel that is extremely curious is uh, is the fact that the, the release of this information was just two days after uh, the U.S. elections, which comes uh, in a very curious timing. There's something going on, yeah. There's yes, something going so on, you're right. I don't to go into the conspiracy the theories, but I feel that there's, there's something going on. Uh, on the other hand, I think it's, it's just a matter to see what, what's going to happen, but definitely I expect that, that by in the next in the next couple of months we should have something a bit more concrete in terms of, of uh, what is the vaccine and what's, what shall we expect on that. So you think it's going to take at least a couple of months until the vaccine actually gets to the to the people, to the population, and the COVID uh, madness starts calming down? Yes, 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 definitely. All right. Now, there's a lot going on in the economic calendar today. We have a lot of news uh, going on. But the most important one, at least from my point of view, is what's happening in Europe. Because we saw protests, big protests in Germany. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Today we have the uh, European Leaders' Summit where most probably the stimulus and the lockdown measures will be mostly uh, discussed. Here's a tough one. Who will recover faster from this madness that spread all over the world, Europe or US? It's, it's, it's very difficult to predict. Obviously, it will depend on the, on the, on the measures, on the, on the stimulus that we'll see now uh, in Europe. We might see even a, um, a double dip uh, recession again in Europe. We will still need to see how it goes down in Europe and the, the reactions in terms of, of, uh, of this COVID and the, next, the, the second lockdown. Uh, in terms of numbers, I don't think the data in Europe was that bad, uh, so it gives some hope uh, for That's for why Europe. I was asking. <laughs> huh? That's why I was asking. Who do you think will recover faster, Europe or, or US? US got hit really, really bad, man. Really, really bad with the second COVID wave. It might, it might be Europe, considering like that uh, being uh, positive on, on, the, on the stimulus side. I, I think Europe, Europe might, might recover faster, but... And let, it will depend on how the things will progress also in the US because 
it's it's it's, it's bad terrible. it's bad and it's getting worse as things uh, stand right now i saw breaking news earlier on apparently new york shut down schools and more and more states are implementing very very tough measures yes yes it's it's, uh, it's it's very very unclear and it's it's a sad moment around the world but uh, i believe that uh, we'll need to wait a few more days to, to understand there's one thing i don't get though in 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 all seriousness there's one thing i don't get how come people are protesting when it's obvious what's going on around the world and you you see the death toll rising day by day what do people want i think they all either they have too much free time <laughs> or uh, I, I i honestly also don't, don't don't understand i think that this uncertainty as i mentioned uh, gives people uh, action uh, and and that's what I, I was mentioning initially that it's extremely important to have this uh, this matter in us complete transition completed because i think people are are completely losing uh, hopes they are uh, the, the, obviously the, all this period of lockdown this was if you see it clearly it was uh, almost a complete year that many businesses lost. Uh, so it's uh, and the COVID started at the end of February. So we are we are talking about almost a full year of of uh, of not being able to operate uh, normally for many businesses around the world. And so people are starting to feel uh, that uh, we need to do something. And uh, obviously, and this, protesting uh, is the best way forward. Uh, re revolution. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think it's important for people to understand that uh, there's uh, that this is something that is affecting people all around the world. Uh, the only way to, in my opinion, to overcome it is with a vaccine or uh, keeping uh, uh, everyone aware that the the solution is in themselves and not not passing the virus to to family members and, and people around them so it's uh, it's uh, it's appealing uh, to the conscience of each one of us uh, i believe at this stage and uh, wait exactly for that vaccine because there's a there's i don't think that uh, revolution uh, will will uh, will cause uh, a different direction at this stage uh, so Patience is the key, as in the market. Yeah. You know what's no, funny? It's... People are that are protesting, yeah, and that are they're burning the same shops where they work. So they're upset that the business is shut down for two weeks or three weeks, and then they go and they protest and they burn the same shops. Right. I see I see an easier, and I, I said it all the time. I, I see a potential easier way around it wouldn't it be much easier if the governments come forward and they encourage people to get their holidays yeah because many people have holidays and and try and persuade them to take one month full lockdown and then things get back to normal instead of locking them down for a week or two you see the cases are increasing you see the people are nervous it's like no one is explaining to to the population that Guys, we need to take one month off. The country will not shut down forever yes. if we take one month off. It will be a very good, a very good decision. But uh, there's always people who uh, who do not agree, and we have always our our own opinion about things. And so it's difficult to control a population uh, on that basis. Uh, this is the thing I wasn't talking about I controlling. I was talking way, about sending a, a parental message to everyone, basically. Take your holidays, stay home one month. We have to do it, all of us. And then things should get back to normal. But anyway, let's get to uh, to one of the hottest topics that I keep talking about every day this week. The Bitcoin, the good almighty Bitcoin. I fell in love with this cryptocurrency uh, a long time ago, but now I'm more in love with it than ever. Um, <laughs> yesterday, Bitcoin broke the 18,000 level and then started pulling back a bit. It's currently trading somewhere around 17, 720. Were you surprised by the uh, the rally or it was kind of predictable? Well, like for me, it was, was, it was predictable uh, considering all this, all this situation we are living. I think uh, uh, when, when, when there's a crisis or when there's, there's an uncertainty, as I mentioned, the gold and Bitcoin at this stage are the, are the, the safe heavens for, for an, an investor. Um, I gold doesn't that, seem uh, a safe heaven anymore. 
Gold is currently no. trading at its lows, uh, 1860 for gold, somewhere there. Yes, uh, yes but my, my opinion is that it will, will, will uh, rise again in the, in the next few weeks. But that, that's, that's, that's my opinion. Um, on the Bitcoin side, I believe that uh, we are, we are uh, the, the, the continuation of, of the targeting, if I'm not mistaken, on the Fibonacci, if you, if you, if you trace the Fibonacci levels. Uh, we might see uh, a range between the 16,000 and the 23,000 uh, mark. So we are, we might see uh, a small uh, um, pull down up to the 16 mark, and then continue up to 2022-23. This is my my understanding on the Bitcoin uh, reading the charts. But uh, uh, I also feel that. We need to understand that there's comparing to two years ago when we reached that December 2017, uh, the 20,000, the all-time high. Yes, well, at that time was mostly uh, retail investors, as you can understand, because at that time Bitcoin was still unclear what is this, what which kind of asset is this. So there was no institutional trading at that time. Uh, this kind of asset. Now we have funds. We have uh, we have uh, the billions of dollars uh, from institutional side uh, investing in Bitcoin. So we are talking about uh, an asset that is now backed by institutions, and so the, the power of of purchase of this kind of asset is is much higher than than, than two years ago. So we we see that it's way more easier now to reach that mark than what was. Uh, two years ago, so we are. I, that's why I, I believe that the, now the, the that mark will definitely be something that will be tested again, uh, and I think we'll pass it. Uh, if, if this uh, this uh, this uh, environment around the world continues uh, uh, as it is, that's actually a very good point. What you said uh, back there, a few years ago, we had the hype among retail traders. And as years go go by, and uh, as everyone saw the hype, now we get closer to a world regulation. We get the big boys, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. We get countries talking about issuing their their cryptocurrencies. That's a very well uh, well said point. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, have you heard of the richest Mexican that keeps uh, ten percent of his uh, wealth in crypto? Yes. <laughs> 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 it's clever, it's clever, and it's diversification is the key. <laughs> right. Now, I wanted to ask you, did the Bitcoin trading volume increase with uh, with Forexc in the last week or so? Did you see an increase in uh, in trading? Uh, not on Bitcoin and all other altcoins as well. We, uh, we, uh, we currently offer, as you know, uh, on the Bitcoin CFD, we offer both in both platforms, MT4 and MT5. Uh, altcoins currently only on MT5, but we are also integrating it now to MT4, so soon will be also available on MT4. And, and it's, it's been, in fact, something that people have been looking for. I think uh, from, uh, from the hedging and from the, uh, covering their, their assets, let's say, uh, some people like to use it. And, and why? Because, as you know, uh, people might have Bitcoin or other cryptos and uh, if they want to invest within the foreign exchange markets, normally the brokerage uh, don't have base currency Bitcoin, so they the clients are always forced to exchange their Bitcoins. Right. Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> yes, yeah, something happened. Something uh, flipped the camera. <laughs> no. Uh, what are so you? It's, uh, people like to um, to uh, uh, manage and hedge this this exposure exactly with uh, with uh, opening trades long and mostly of them are long at this stage on on the different altcoins and bitcoin exactly to cover this exchange that they did uh, bitcoin to fiat in order to invest in them in the, and in, in depositing their, their trading accounts so it's it's, it's great. Yesterday, it's, uh, I was talking to uh, to George Agathangelo from Cyprus Blockchain Association, and I asked him the question, is now Bitcoin being heavily used as a hedge against inflation and against the, the conventional assets? And I think the answer is clear for everyone. Yes, it is. Definitely. Quick one. What are your trading conditions on cryptocurrencies? I mean, I know your leverage is higher than uh, the European brokerages. 
Then we have, we, in terms of, of leverage, we have we have a higher leverage on the CFPs uh, than the average. We are talking about around one to one hundred on the on the crypto side as well. So it's uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, obviously, on the FX side, we go up to one to four hundred, which is 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 uh, way above the levels uh, that we know in Europe and soon also in Australia. So uh, we, in terms of leverage, in terms of facilities, we are quite quite uh, generous uh, on that level. And apart from that, your trades are audited. Um, of course, yes. No, we have all, all our trades, as, as, as people can find on our website. We have all trades verified by an entity called uh, Verify My Trade, which is part uh, and is, is related to the Financial Commission, the entity that, that covers our uh, insurance. And you also insurance. provide the Investor Compensation Fund. Right. So this Verify My Trade, every month we send the full report of trades uh, to this entity that the trades are open at the right price uh, and so it gives this extra verification and for us it's a peace of mind also because it, uh, it guarantees that our execution is flawless and this is uh, the only way to to be transparent is exactly to to show that all this execution is uh, is um, verified very well done now Question, do you think it would be a good time to go long on Bitcoin uh, right now? It doesn't seem to be creating higher highs. And the pullback that happened yesterday or last night worried me a bit. It, would it be a good time to, to go long? Because people like to go long after a pullback. That's what traders do. I don't know. But as, as, uh, as uh, well, uh, a wise man said, when everybody talks about some uh, assets in, in the coffee shop, it's time to sell. <laughs> so uh, we need to be careful on, on that regard. I would maybe expect a wait to, uh, for the support level around 16,000 mark and then uh, uh, probably buy, buy that dip uh, on the 60,000. That's uh, where the 200 moving over. average is. Yeah, around 16,000. Right. Okay. So wait and see what's going to happen. Yeah, that's the, the key word. Yes. Right. What would you recommend in terms of uh, trading these days, uh, Joe? FX, commodities, stocks, cryptocurrencies. What's an asset class that's? Steady? I think it's. Uh, I, I prefer. I personally like always to trade assets with liquidity. I think the the, the majors, uh, gold, crude oil, uh, Bitcoin. I think now are the main uh, assets which are affecting. There's volatility involved. In, in result of all these events, so uh, I would I would focus mostly on these assets that not only uh, are more volatile, but also there's more uh, there's more impact of news. And, and I think for a trader, we want volatility, so we want uh, a market to take the direction. And I think this is the the best way to uh, to uh, to identify trends and to benefit from the, from the trade. I'm with you. Okay. Until then, caution, caution, caution. Yeah, we might have some big swings in the market. At least that's what uh, announced. Let's see how the protests in uh, in Germany uh, go today. Hopefully things will calm down. People will understand. And hopefully the vaccine will uh, will calm things down uh, even more. Correct. Right, Joe, thank you ever so much for being with us today. I'm so happy to have you. I, You know I enjoy talking to you every time about yes. the market. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm cooking something now. I am cooking something. I'll get back to you in a couple of days with more news. I need your opinion on it, and who knows? Maybe we're going to do a big project together. Great. Happy. Looking forward. Right. Joe, thank you so much for being with us today. Nice. We're going we're gonna to come back to you in a couple of days.